Happy Christmas! It's... We are here! The final, last Christmas service before Christmas Day. It's Ooh. here! Ooh. Are you happy? Woohoo! I am absolutely hyped. I love Christmas. I am a Christmas person all year. Um, as you can see from the elf dress. Chloe, actually. Chloe, come on Chloe, in. Chloe, come in, isn't it? We're We're well. Well. Have we started? We're live, yeah, we're live. live. <laughs> There's a storm balancing. Yeah, Wait, can they see me? Chloe's turned up late to the party, as you can see. So <laughs> can they see? We're matching. Woo! Woo! Christmas! 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 I don't think anybody um, noticed you coming inside, do yeah, you? Know, like, the studio yeah, at all. It was really smooth. subtle, yeah. She just like peeked ever. through the door. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we're really excited to have you here. And we hope that you're excited to be watching us as well today. So. Yeah, there's lots of changes. And sorry for everybody who heard the news yesterday that they may not be able to travel yeah. to see the family in the way that you'd planned it. We hope that you are able to do appropriate alternatives you know, but we're going to be here right the way through Christmas. Yeah, you woo know, bring in the cheer and the hope of Jesus Christ. You know, because God has still blessed us with so much. Yeah. Hasn't he? So Amen. Fantastic. Amen. So we're going to be talking as well this morning about Christmas parties. Wow. Mm. Um, we know you all have a good Christmas party. Um, this year, the, the Christmas party game has been low. I'll be honest. Seeing as they were banned by the government and they were made legal, but we've had some online. Have you been to any Christmas parties yet? Uh, no, no Christmas parties yet online. Although I've been watching by, you know, the different office parties like Josh uh, yeah. has been at home, watched his office party. They actually sent him, his company, yeah. sent him the whole thing. He had a box and he could open. It was hot chocolates and it was cookies, you know, and sweets. You know what? My, my employer didn't do that. You are your employer. <laughs> Jesus is your employer. Yeah. Isn't it? Jesus, I'm blessed with I mean, so many more. Actually. What he has done, amen. he's giving more. <laughs> yeah, we had a young adults quiz on Monday, and it was hilarious. Wow. So Sam Davies, Joe Harris, Emmerich. PJ Clays, Emric yeah. Franz. If you're watching, you guys literally did a cracking job. I've never laughed so much in my life. I had no idea what was going on, but honestly, I've laughed so much. Just so you can have loads of fun online That's even true. like now it's about what you put into it you know yeah. and how you engage with that you know so we're gonna have lots of fun this morning i think as well, as well. What was like uh well well the, the young adults one set a pretty high standard yeah. for what i was expecting online christmas parties to be yeah. like and um and mine was was great it was they did a really good job um but they'd organized this sketch Ooh. and um and it was like very political and Ooh. i just it all went completely over my head and i was trying <laughs> to like i was like like trying to be like ha ha yeah of course um and i mean like the average age of my office probably like about 45 so they all understood it and so it was hilarious and i just was like ha, ha, good one no, I don't. <laughs> they literally said at one point, they were like, sorry, you're probably too young for this. And I was like, oh, every so often I just laugh politely. So did, did you dress up and everything? Did I wore of... an elf costume. Wow. Yeah, this exact one. I don't have more out. than one. I just want to clarify. I don't know what you've but done for one. your Christmas party, but let us know. Because we generally are interested how yeah. we've managed to find even partying across it. it maybe you like was it. was hilarious I mean, though. maybe you like this. Yeah. You've been an introvert your whole life and you're going, this is just perfect for me. You know, I can <laughs> have my food. I can just sit there, you know, and when what? bad signal goes. That's probably true. And I think as well, the good thing about these Christmas parties is they, um, they like finish quite promptly. So oh, like, yeah. like at the end of it, it's like, well, have a happy Christmas and run, see you later. And then um, you see them the next day at work, you know, like online yeah. again. But, but it's, you know, it's eight o'clock, you're finished. Yeah, yeah. You go in, have dinner, Go to bed. It's also cheaper, isn't it? It's also cheaper, cheaper as well, yeah. yeah. Saving money this year, all going on. That's isn't it? true. So That's true. Fantastic, isn't it? I have thought of a new way to um, make some money this Christmas, though. I think I'm going to start charging for this service well that I'm trying. I, I think I'm now the Richardson rapper. Um, and I mean, like, present, oh, I mean like presents rapper, not like Stormzy like. Yo, yo, yo. But, um, <laughs> but I have wrapped quite a few people's presents in the house, including mum's. Um, so me. Me, Chloe and Mum actually had a wrapping afternoon last Sunday. I haven't wrapped any Sunday. presents yet. Honestly, no presents yet. And I think this afternoon I'd better start, you know, doing the wrapping. You know, yeah. So I will wrap Rachel's one present. <laughs> yeah, 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 literally. <laughs> that took me um, ages, is not it? You know, so are you just kind of on a, a philosophy? Because this is quite important. Yeah. You know, when you've got all the presents here, do you like take the individual ones and put them together and wrap them into no. one big present? No. Or are they all separate? Right. You know, Who is doing really that? Who is doing that? I got a lot of issues with Lev's wow. the other day went to wrap a secret Santa gift. Yeah. He had two and he had to wrap them together. Whoa. I was like, what are you doing? Wow. Part of Christmas is unwrapping the gifts. Yeah. Sometimes with Nafe, 
loves unwrapping presents, literally loves it. And previously, I have wrapped up his already owned toys so he can open them before Christmas so that he feels like he's opened a present. He doesn't even care about the fact he's already got the toy. He just wants to rip the paper off of it, so. Somebody sent me a tweet this week, you know, on this kind of one of these memes that says we should wrap um, empty boxes and put them under our Christmas tree. And when our children are noisy, we should just, naughty, we should just take one of the presents and put it into the fire. You know, mm. and go for, that's one less. Isn't How it? to traumatise your child, 101, <laughs> by Aaron Richardson. <laughs> I, I wasn't uh, saying that, that was acceptable yeah. practice, but it made me laugh. I'll be honest, uh, growing up it was Do you know who makes me laugh? It's Joshua's rapping. Have you seen Joshua's oh. rapping, isn't it? So what I thought we'd do, we'd do a demonstration of Joshua. So we're just going to take, here's an example of, this is Ducky Duck Duck Duck. You know, I've actually stolen from the pace of You get like these presents that are different shapes and sizes. So how do you wrap it? So I thought Joshua's come up with this really good idea of demonstrating how to wrap. So, you know, here's wrapping paper here. And this is how Joshua does it. Okay, Beth. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm just going to hold it. And, and what Joshua is, he gets somebody to hold it, right? And then your goal is, is you have to throw it at me. Right, you know, like this that. could go horribly wrong if I hit the And face. this is how Josh wraps. Like that. A piece of tape. Some pre Merry Christmas, Dad. Look at that, and, and that is what Joshua is, and that's you know where you get under the tree. I've actually seen worse wrapping than that. <laughs> I, I mean, like I've been teaching Levy how to wrap, and are you um, really tidy wrapper? Um, well, I don't want to. This is going to make me sound really sad. I sometimes watch wrapping videos. <laughs> 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 and it like they create these cool little pockets and I'll be like this is absolutely yeah, great and I, I do, try I it I try it and it looks wow. like the worst thing so I've what ever if done. you like cut paper and it snags what do you do there Are you, do you like just cut it straight again no no you just put that bit underneath the and other you, bit don't you, you fold over yeah you know, get the fold line nice the thing is I try and like wrap really neatly until it gets to something that's not a square shape and then I'm like Oh no. Wow. <laughs> and you start to just like cram it all in and then just use more tape really, don't you? You can tell if it's not a good present mm. to wrap because I've used about half the roll of tape and So there you go. If the you best. want any ideas for Christmas wrapping, um, get to know Josh, uh, let us know. Got any pictures that you want to send of your perfect wrapping or non perfect or the worst wrapped big gift under your tree? Yeah. I mean, and know. also I've got a question That's about nice. labels. Because everyone does Christmas labels differently. And what I feel like some people like skive out on this really and just like mum just writes on the parcel with a sharpie there's no like there's no like nice little label stuck on it, it i cut i use the wasted wrapping paper fold it in half and write a little mm. note and stick it on mum doesn't do just sharpie saying beth wow. Don't starting to glaze from. over here because obviously it's not my speciality yeah. if you just kind of logging on what we do is like a pre-service chat we are going to start our service in about mm -hmm. three minutes time you know definitely got time to put the kettle on hot chocolate yep. nice favorite christmas coffee you know get your slippers there put the fire on you know chocolates by the way this kind of hit the christmas news this week sucks. by the way because somebody has done a whole load of research and then tweeted it on the different chocolate formations you get in your quality streets you know, and did you know, right, they're, they're, it actually caused an absolute storm because there's only four purple ones. <gasps> you know? What are they the ones the Absolute. hazelnut in? Yeah, and everybody goes to the four purple And guess what there's 11 of? Yeah, you guessed it, the orange ones, you know, or the toffee pennies, you know, the ones I that's always left over. I love the toffee pennies. They are toothbreakers, though. The dentists make a lot of money you from them. You used to think they were left over because nobody liked them. They're actually left over because they stack the ones with them yeah, in there. Yeah, that's know, true. So that's true. Like, Whoa, that's just terrible, isn't it? You know, well, so. I as well. I like to. I like celebrations, yeah. but I can rate Should them we as well. Them and I'm going to rate them for you. The top one. It's got to be Malteser, hasn't it? I think top Malteser. Followed is the by best one. the Galaxy, the caramel one. Then the normal Imagine Galaxy Malteser. one. Is, I'll have one in a sec. Then, then let, let me. I'll just. I'm on a roll here, guys. I've got. Then it's the Mars, the Milky Way, the Twix, um, the Snickers and the Bounty. I'll be honest. This shouldn't be in here. I don't know about you, but they are the worst ones. I would eat the paper box before the stickers and the so bounty. me and your mum, we were sat on the bed watching TV the other day and we realised something, right? And this is how we realised our match made in heaven, that we both like different chocolates. So what Rachel oh doesn't like, God. I eat. And what she doesn't like, I don't like, she mm. eats, you know? And we kind of almost split down half and half. So, well, which is fantastic. Great. So we probably, if you haven't fallen to sleep with our incredibly scintillating Christmas yeah. chat, then wake yourself up because we're about to go live to our service as we get ready for our Riverside celebration. So come on, lots of energy, lots of life. Sing to your heart's content yeah. as we get ready whoop, for whoop. Our, this week's Christmas over. This one made me laugh, by the way. So. What? 
fear not. <laughs> Behold, I bring you good news of a messiah. Ye shall find the babe. <clears throat> By um, logging on, just go to the church website. But also, you can you can come to the Christmas Eve services that we will be, you know, safe and everything. Yeah, we're just social distancing, just, you know, trying to take care of each other. Social distancing? Why are you still standing there? Grab your laptop and log on. Or head to the church, if that's your preference, and celebrate the birth of Jesus. <laughs> I'll socially distance, but I'm going to church. I'm going to go to my mom's house. She's got the fastest internet in town. Hello, Hello and welcome everyone. If you've just joined us and haven't been here for the chat, we want to say a massive warm welcome to the last service before Christmas. Yeah, Woo! Wow, we're already here. Welcome to Riverside Church yeah. Online. You know, the key is wherever you're sat or standing or watching me in a field or in your front room is to just kind of really let go and enjoy yourself, you know, because we just love God. We love the church yes. and we love what he's doing. Despite everything, yep. we are here to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and that's, that's great news so isn't it? so true and we have so many exciting things planned this we morning do. so please get sharing, get commenting on this post, yes. your friends and families are not going to want to miss this and my favourite thing of the programme <laughs> is we have a return of Josh's dance sketch for Christmas what? stereotypes and I am absolutely hyped for it so. Christmas stereotypes is a character that's not formed on any true uh, individual but if you think it's me it's not I'm just the inspiration for all the humour. That's what we tell him yeah. In the house but that is coming up later on. What else have we got coming up in the programme? We've got some incredible worship this morning. Yeah, We've we got do. some classic yeah. carols coming up as well. Yes. I love carols. Fantastic. We've got an awesome preach by Josh yep. this morning. He's, so he's playing two roles, the preacher and the dad oh, in the no, stereotype no, 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 videos. Changing. We don't know it's Josh. Oh, sorry. Spoiler alert. So um, yeah, lots going on. And uh, we're really glad that yeah. you've joined us online, you know, because we've got so much to celebrate. Yeah, so let's yeah. just join um, as we go live into the band and Ooh. we're going to sing together Joy to the World. So lift your voices, declare that out, and maybe you even want to do a little dance in your front room. Amen. So Joy Amen. to the World. Fields and floods, 
Truck hills and plains Repeat the sounding joy Repeat the sounding joy Repeat, repeat the sounding Father God, let's pray. We just want to bring ourselves before you. We want to bring this whole country before you at this time. And the message of the mm. hope of Christmas, that you are the joy to the world, is unchanged. Lord God, we acknowledge and we confess together that our joy is not based on our external circumstances, 
but it's based on our relationship that we have with the Almighty God through Jesus Christ. And so we ask that you would come right mm, now and yeah. bless us, that you would fill our homes, whether we sit alone, whether we sit with family, whatever we do over this Christmas period, Lord God, that we wouldn't look to what we cannot do, yeah. but we would look to what we are able to do. May the sun shine on us over Christmas. For those who are anxious, may you bring your peace. Yeah. For those who are lonely, may you bring your comfort, Lord God. And you would just bless us with your joy eternal overflowing mm, lord god that goes yeah. against everything that is happening right now and supersedes lord our circumstances because you are really glorious yeah. amen 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 that was awesome wasn't it, it was. thanks so much band for those mm. wonderful christmas carols i was gonna say crackers but that is a completely <laughs> different christmas thing christmas crackers. um but we still have so many exciting things happening at church so we're gonna go over to riverside news so you can find out more about what's going on great Hi, I'm Elena. Hi, I'm Yanita. Hi, I'm Caitlin. And, and this, this is Riverside Christmas, Christmas News. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Riverside Church. If you're here in the building, it's great to have you here. And if you're online, it's great to have you too. If you're new, then let us know. Send us a message. We'd love to get connected with you. And if you're here in the building, come and chat with us. We'd love to speak to you too. Tonight at 7 p.m. we have a Compassion Carol service and it will be live streamed from our Facebook page. And we have a little trailer for you to get you excited. Enjoy a night of Carols with Compassion, featuring Martin Smith, Lorene Cato, Noel Robinson, Philippa Hanna, Graham Kendrick, Ellie Linebear, Di Woolridge, Hillsong London and the London Community Gospel Choir. This is an unforgettable evening full of Christmas carols as well as readings from around the world. On Christmas Day the 25th, we have a Christmas Day service here at Riverside so at 10.30. So if you want to come and bring your family along, that would be great. Just let us know that you're coming, book in, and we're really looking forward to having you there. Hey everyone, we just wanted to take a moment to say thank you for bringing in all the cakes, goodies and toys for this year's Christmas giveaway. Yes, we've got to the point where we've managed to pack most of them, you know, and so you've got kind of stockings uh, for lots and lots of children. And just to let you know, they're going to go to some of our high five children who we haven't been able to connect with during the year because of the different lockdowns and restrictions. And also we are going to send some to the community larder. So every family in the community larder, every child in a house will get a stocking from us. And that's really exciting. But what we also did is we also we asked you for appreciation hampers because, you know, care homes, NHS staff, you know, emergency services have done such a great job that we've done it. And this is what this looks like, you know, but this is going to go to each one full of really uh, great goodies of mince pies, chocolates, you know, lots of surprises as well. And that really is just the carrying essence of saying thank you to our community champions for doing such an exceptional job. Now, we wouldn't have been able to do it without your help. So thank you very much. Next Sunday at 10.30, we have our online Thanksgiving service. We're going to be thankful for what's happened this year, and we're going to be looking forward for what's to come in 2021. And we can't wait for you to join us, so log on at 10.30 and we'll see you there. Sadly, this is the end of Riverside News, but Caitlin has a job for us. How does Snow Wayne get to work? I don't know how. On an icicle. That was not Great. a good job. <laughs> Well, awesome. so much going on, isn't there? You know, actually, Indeed. I went to the distribution centre of all our gifts, which we're using the Methodist oh, Church, great. into the community. There is so much goods there, you know, and I'll yeah. get final photos of that because we're delivering this week uh, to all those families um, yeah. and to, I'm going up to the police and the ambulance service, yeah, you know, so and the fire station. You, yeah. you know, it's a big thank you. Um, but really, first of all, thank you for giving. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to bless the community this week. It's so incredible as well. And awesome. don't forget tonight, we've got the online carol service yeah. with Compassion Carols. Ooh. Ooh. So, it might not be as good as last week, you know, here at home, but you know. Oh yeah, that's still on Facebook Live if you want to go back and watch it. 
Um, wouldn't recommend that. We had a great time. Isn't it? <laughs> we did. We laughed a lot Fantastic. at each other. But now we've got a really exciting another video. Yeah, yeah. Um, so kids, this is this is the kids video for Christmas, and it's really it's really cute. So sweet. Um, so here we go. Take it away. <laughs> So girls, what's so special about Christmas? It's Jesus' birthday on Christmas. Yeah, and why do you think Jesus makes you happy? Why do you love Christmas then? Because I get presents. <laughs> <laughs> I just like getting new toys. What are you hoping to get this year? Uh, a lorry because I really like lorries and a train. Cool. And what do you think about Christmas when Jesus was a baby? Um, that I was born. Yeah. I was born when Jesus was born. Promises are promises we've waited in faith. Prophecies on prophecies say God will come in grace. Shining stars singing freedom is here. Hope of every heart. Sing our fears. Peace be to all of the earth, for our God sent His Son. Joy into all of the world, our Savior has been born. Light has come. Glory in the highest. Sudden thrill of hope. Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, your heart is our home. Peace be to all of the earth, for our God sends his son. Joy into all of the world, our Savior has been born. My name's Caitlin. Hi, I'm Yunita. 
Hannah. 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 And we are so excited because it's only five days till Christmas. Oh, right. oh. We have got a great kids video coming up today at 11am on the Facebook page. We're going to be doing a craft where we're going to be making sheep. You need cotton wool, you need cards, scissors, pens. And there's going to be a document on the Facebook page for you to look at and learn how to make them. We're going to be doing worship. We've got a story. We've got a really fun game where you need to use your memory to play. And yeah, we'd love for you to get involved. So join us at 11am and watch our video. And we'd love to have fun with you guys. See you soon. Bye. 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 So it's good. Amazing, it's it? exciting. And our kids program will be posted at 11 o'clock today, so keep your eyes peeled. Yeah. But now is the time for the dad stereotype to return. So we're gonna just we're gonna launch straight into it because I can't make you wait a moment longer. Josh, it's over to you. Go. Christmas cheer! She's noisy, son. And indeed, for womankind, she doesn't look good, does she? Send her victorious. Take over. Dad, can I take my toy? Just a second. Pen, pen. <laughs> Rudy. Hmm. Oh, Gladys. Love to be right, call for Uncle Gladys. Where's the cards, love? What?
Yoo-hoo! Hi, Aunt Gladys. It's safe to say I've never been prouder as a sister than I was watching that. I have that. to say that no dads were harmed in the filming of Aunt that. Aunt Gladys Although... is the funniest though. <laughs> That was Josh. I know, I know. No way, that was Josh. I didn't know it was Josh, isn't it? <laughs> Two <laughs> reputations of dads there, so you might identify with those characters, or that might be your dad, so why would you send it to your dad? That's a Christmas present going, think about old Christmas's dad, <laughs> this reminded me <laughs> of you, isn't it? You know the snow hunt, no, that's definitely not me. And that's dad. mum, we that is mum, 100%. Hunt, well, we're going to go back to worship now. We are. Um, partly to recover from that video as well. So we're going to go into worship and then we're going to go straight through to the reading and the preach. So. Hope has a name and his name is Jesus. Amen. Come and set the captives free. Come set us free. Hope has a name. Amen. You Redemption, which started in a manger, ended in an empty grave. Oh, I know that. The hope has a name. Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star 
when it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leader priests and teachers of religious law, and he asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over a place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. We're just going to have a quick video, and then Josh is going to bring us the word. join us online or in person for the first time. Um, my name is Josh, and when I'm not filming videos and making myself look silly, um, I'm also that you've passed it here. <laughs> um, but I thought we'd start. Um, we're going to have a bit of fun today. Is that all right? Is it right? I always think it's good. When I heard laughing in church, that's a good sign. That's a good sign for me. So we're going to have a little bit of fun. I've got some props um, to help me as I, uh, as I sort of illustrate what I'm going to say. But let's start by just praying, Shui, and inviting Jesus into this space. Jesus, you just come and fill this space now. And we're talking about this space, Jesus, we're talking about each of our hearts. We might be in the room, we might be watching online, but Jesus, right now we commit to open ourselves up to you. Whatever you've got for us today, we speak to us powerfully. Will you change us? Will you challenge us? Will you spur us on? Thank you for your presence with us already. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I uh, love Christmas. I, I know this Christmas will be a little bit different, but I really, really love Christmas. I love the whole experience of Christmas. I like the carols. I like the, um, the trees. I like the songs, the films, the annual leave. I really like the annual leave. It's good, that, isn't it? And one of the things that I've learned to enjoy more and more over the last couple of years is the food. I really enjoy the food, and there's some of you this morning, well, you're just coming up for all. Oh, there's some people here who obviously enjoy the food with me. 
I'm joking. Um, but just on a set, very separate note, we'll be starting the Daniel Fast in January. So if you want to sign up for that, you can. Um, but I remember as a child at Christmas, really, it, was all, it, it, come, it hit December and it was like, the presents are coming. And now, as sort of a 24-year-old man, I remember December hits and I'm like, Christmas dinner's coming. Christmas dinner is coming. Have you ever thought about the Christmas dinner? I wonder if you ever thought about the practical. It's a weird thing. It's a weird thing because although probably we all come from very different backgrounds in here um, and we're in the UK, we probably, all our Christmases probably look very different. Every family has a different expression of how they do Christmas. Every individual ha- has a different way of doing Christmas. Maybe it's the way that you set the table. Maybe it's the way that you season the turkey. Maybe it's the way that you sort of like sort of make sure that how the presents are distributed. Everybody's Christmas looks different. Everybody's Christmas dinner looks different. In the Richardson house, I'd say that we're quite a traditional family. We've got the turkey as the main. Put your hand up if you're a turkey as the main meal, people. Oh, fair enough. About 50, just over fifty percent. We like the. We've got the turkey. We've got the stuffing. Pigs in blankets has to be had. We're talking roast potatoes, cranberry sauce. Um, I can sense some passion in the house now as I'm talking about the Christmas dinner. It's, it's not a building, it? Like, oh, yeah. We've got veg, which includes the sprouts, and I'll come on to them in a second. We've got roast, but, uh, roast and this is one that underrated, the gravy. The gravy is a key component, but nobody ever talks about the gravy at Christmas dinner, but it's a key, it brings it all together. And in the run-up to Christmas, as I usually do, I've been thinking about the Christmas dinner, and I've been thinking about the sprouts, and I've been thinking about how the sprouts make the cut to the Christmas dinner. How do the sprouts get on my plate every year at Christmas? I want to know how they get their invitation because it's not right. It's not right. Come on. <laughs> the only time that we eat sprouts, I don't know about you, but the only time we eat sprouts in our house is Christmas Day uh, and Boxing Day and the day after Boxing Day, and day after Boxing Day. And I'll tell you why, because in our house, usually when things go in the fridge, you've got a two-hour rule. If you don't touch it in two hours, it's probably gone, it's probably been eaten. But somehow the sprouts don't apply to that rule. You know, we put the sprouts in on Christmas Day, and they're still there come sort of like the 22nd of February. You know what I mean? And it's just sort of like, nobody wants the sprouts. Maybe you like sprouts, and that's okay. And we're going to give you an opportunity to be prayed for at the end, and, and God's going to do some stuff. No, but as I looked at sprouts, and as I thought about sprouts and how they get on the plate, they don't seem to fit on my Christmas dinner plate. It drew me back to parallels of the Christmas story. And as I look at the Christmas story, it doesn't make sense to me. There's all these components, all these things going on, all these people there that don't seem to fit to the event of the magnitude that it is. The king, the greatest king. The king of kings, born into obscurity, into an environment that wasn't fit for a person, let alone a king. Surrounded by a cast of characters who were like my sprouts on a plate. This didn't seem to make sense, don't seem to fit there. We've got shepherds, wise men, a virgin mother, an innkeeper, a carpenter. But in this moment, they all come together. They all come together with this, this, this agenda of encountering Jesus in that moment. And I'll tell you why, because they all responded to an invitation that God had given them to be there in that moment, to experience the hope of the world, to experience the King of Kings. And I want to tell you this year, this Christmas, Jesus extends the same invitation to every one of us, that we may come into an encounter with him this Christmas, that we may pursue and find him in every area, in every component, in the food, in the music, in the cows, in everything, that we would find Jesus this Christmas. And I'm going to today, if I can, look at some lessons that we can learn from some of the characters um, that we come across. Some people who get invited to the best Christmas party ever, the the best birthday party ever. And everybody here, I'm sure, will will, will know that that we all learn in different ways, don't we? Um, Maybe you sort of like um, sort of seeing things. And I'm one of those people. I like to see things. And then what I do is I associate the visual to the oral communication of something. And all the the great messages that I can remember that stick in my brain, I can see what was happening and I can remember the message behind it. So I'm going to do that today. So I brought some props. And each time we go for a character, I'm just going to sort of get into the character. So it kind of, it paints the illustration. Hopefully, even if you don't remember this wonderful, message you'll remember me looking like a fool so and that might prompt your memory so first character can you guess who it is the shepherds yeah <laughs> this is the uh, the you, sort of worldwide universally known outfit for a shepherd it's not particularly glamorous it's just come out of my kitchen drawer it has been cleaned 
Um, but let's look at the shepherds. In Luke 2, we read that the angels appear to the shepherds. Um, and, 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 and we see this weird thing where they're, sort of they're scared. And then what the angels say is, look, there's going to be a saviour born in Bethlehem. You can go. This is how you'll find him. And this is the shepherd's response, right? In verse 15 of Luke 2, it says, When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and let's see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. The first lesson I want to draw out of these characters is sometimes we need to see something different to what we've currently been seeing. This Christmas, we need to see something to what we used to be seeing. Because the shepherds, they were used to seeing sheep. And that's great because, you know, for little fluffy characters, they're great, they're good. But seeing the savior of the world is better than a sheep. Would you agree with me? Hopefully. (laughs) The shepherds had to neglect seeing something they were used to seeing to see something new. The sheep wouldn't have been, I don't think all the sheep, is that the plural word for sheep? Sheeps? It's not just sheep, isn't it? The sheep would have been able to, they wouldn't have fitted into the stable, so they would have to, for even for just a couple of minutes, had to neglect their duty as shepherds. I wonder if you're willing to neglect something to find something better this Christmas. You know, this Christmas, we're, there's going to be stuff that we're going to need to put down. Distractions come up, it's Christmas. That we need to make a decision, actually, right, I'm going to choose to see Jesus I'm going to choose to see Jesus. I may, might be tempted to see the, and look at the fact that I can't spend Christmas with my family as many as I might want to. I might be tempted to look at the COVID numbers in, in this area. I might be tempted to look at the presents. I might be tempted to look at the dinner. But I will make a decision to see something better. To see something bigger. To see Jesus this Christmas. Who wants to see Jesus this Christmas? Put your hand up. Come on. Let's respond to Jesus' invitation that got, you know, that got given to the shepherds to see something greater. The second thing that the shepherds teach us is that encounters with Jesus repurpose our lives. It says this in verse 17 and 18. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. See, the shepherds, after they meet Jesus, are no longer just defined by their sheep. They are defined now by their saviour. These are guys who I imagine would have spent most of their time talking about sheep or talking to sheep. Now, they begin people who start telling people about Jesus. They start telling people about the story of the night their life was turned upside down and they went from being shepherds to evangelists. And as we read the Bible now, we do not remember the shepherds just because they were shepherds. Because they wouldn't have made it in if they were just shepherds. We remember them and we see them and we read them because they responded to an invitation that was given to them to encounter Jesus. And may we do the same this Christmas. In that moment, they went from being people of no significance or very little significance to significant enough for God to invite them to his son's birthday party. That is significant. You need to know today that your significance is not found in your circumstances, not your situations or your self-worth. It's found in your saviour. Your significance is in your saviour. I don't know what you've been known for in the past or known as in the past, but when you come to Jesus, there's a changing. What you, might have been known, you might have been known as a shepherd in your past, but now you are known as somebody who has had an, had an encounter with Jesus. And that is really important. He sees you as significant. So that's the shepherds. The next character I've got is the wise men. Um, and I don't know what, what you think of when you think of beards. Um, but I think of um, two things. I think of wise men and I think of pirates. But I'm going to go for the wise. This is, I'm dressing up as a, as a wise man today, not a pirate. This is good as well because it doubles up as a mask. So extra COVID protection. Let me, t- let me tell you a little bit. In Matthew 2, we, we're introduced to the, the wise men. Um, let me tell you a little bit about them. So they're, they're probably of Persian or, or um, Arabian descent, astrologers of some kind. Um, and the lesson that we learn from them is to be committed to encountering Jesus. Their commitment is remarkable. These are men who would have traveled a considerable distance to encounter the king. A considerable distance. They wouldn't have seen the star that night. And on their way back from the old nag's head, popped in to see Jesus. This is intentional. They'd have studied the star for a period of time. They'd have studied the scriptures. The journey itself would have taken 
ages. I looked at the average speed of a camel. It's three miles an hour. You're not going anywhere fast on the back of a camel. They can reach 25 sort of miles an hour when they're really running, though. There you go. Um, but so <laughs> They came from a long way away. You know, the whole process of them encountering Jesus could have taken months, if not years. They would have experienced dangers. They were walking through quite arid conditions. So there would have been risks of robbers. There would have been risks of animals. But they were committed to the process of finding Jesus. And can we be committed to the process of finding Jesus this Christmas? Sometimes, you know, when we're trying to find Jesus, it can be a little bit difficult. Jesus himself says, look, you want to come into the kingdom of heaven, it's a narrow door. Sometimes we can feel distant. Sometimes we feel vulnerable. Sometimes we feel like it would be easier to turn back than to keep following Jesus. And sometimes we'd be right. But Jesus is the reward. Jesus was the reward for the wise men, and he's the reward for us. He's the prize. He's worth it all. Having a relationship with Jesus is what we are designed for. It's what we are created for. It's what our purpose is. And we can't find full purpose or full fulfillment outside of that. If you know, if you've tried, then you'll know that. If we live in him, we'll live in peace. We'll live in joy. We will be perfectly loved and have the capabilities to perfectly love others. Let's be a people who commit to the process. Commit like those wise men did. Commit to the process of whatever it looks like this Christmas. I'm committing to pursuing you, Jesus. There might be distractions. There might be temptations. But I'm going to push through and I will find you in the, in the music. And I will find you in the family. And I will find you in the dinner. And as we make that decision, we will find him. Because Jesus says, you know, if you seek me, you'll find me. If you seek me, you'll find me. There's not loads that we can do this Christmas, but we can seek Jesus. We can seek Jesus, can't we? There's one more character in, the, in that passage in Matthew 2. I'm going to change, if that's right. I'm glad because that beard was really itchy. That's why I don't grow beards. It's not because I can't. Are you convinced? Can somebody help me with my jacket? That's all right. I'm not sure this is the right way around. The character is, in, the, in Matthew 2, we're introduced to another person who gets the invitation. I'll tell you what. Oh, there we go. I'm feeling cool now. It's King Herod. I've got fluff in my mouth. <laughs> Herod. Let me tell you a little bit about Herod. Herod is the king of Judea. He's the Roman king. Um, and he refers to himself as the king of the Jews. Herod, known as a great builder, in fact, you know, helps build the... Um, re- have I still got flow? He, re- he helps rebuild um, and renovate the, the Jerusalem temple. Um, and what we see is, in the passage we've just read, we see the, the wise men at the end deciding not to go back to see Herod and tell him where Jesus is. And then there's this passage just after that in verse 16 where it tells us a little bit about Herod. It says this, it says, Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him and he sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under based on the wise men's report of the, first, of the star's first appearance. And the first thing we learn from Herod is there is an enemy who does not want Jesus to reign this Christmas. There is an enemy who does not want Jesus to reign in our lives, full stop. Jesus says about the enemy in John 10 that he has come to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. This Christmas, there's going to be stuff that's going to distract us from focusing on Jesus. There's going to be stuff that stops us from casting our attention on Jesus. We will feel tempted. We will feel like, oh, we just want to take our eyes off. I just want to sort of like chill out and forget about Jesus. But Jesus says, look at me. This morning he says to you, look at me, concentrate on me. Jesus says in the world, we will have troubles. But take heart because I have overcome the world. That Ultimately, there is victory in Jesus. Who's glad there's victory in Jesus? There's a battle going on, but the war is over. The war is over. There's no temptation, no situation, no circumstance, no disease, no virus that can move Jesus from the throne in heaven. There is nothing. He is all powerful. He is above everything. And the problem is those words in the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? That says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because we know that Jesus is on the throne in heaven. We know that. 
But we each individually need to make that decision to say, Jesus, on earth as it is in heaven, will you be on the throne of my life? Will you be on the throne of my life this Christmas? Will you be the ruler? Will you be the one who reigns above it all? Amen. The second thing we learn from Herod is that we need to, if we choose fear over faith, we miss out. If we choose fear over faith, we miss out. Herod, the great builder, misses an opportunity to build something of eternal value. He misses the opportunity to be part of building God's kingdom here on earth. doesn't get better than that. That's the difference between the shepherds and the wise men and Herod. It's fear and faith. Fear and faith. Because when the angels appeared to the shepherds, it says what? They were terrified. So we, we see this, they're scared, but they make a decision to choose faith, not fear. We need to make decisions to choose faith, not fear. I'm going to choose this Christmas, even though whatever's going on in the news around me, this new strain of COVID, I will not choose fear. I will choose what? Faith. Yeah. The invitation that Jesus gives us in the Bible is clear, that if we want to follow him, we need to submit, we need to have faith, we need to put our trust into him. Give him control of the direction of our life and submit to him. We have to be people who live by faith and not by sight. Billy Graham said this, Jesus invited us not to a picnic, but to a pilgrimage. He offered us not an excursion, but an execution. Our Savior said that we would have to be ready to die to self, sin and world. This Christmas, will you choose faith over fear? Will you choose faith over fear? Will you say yes to Christ's invitation to have faith in him, to put your trust in him. It will repurpose you, it will challenge you, it will change you, and you will never get a better invitation than this. You will never. I'm going to finish. Does somebody want to jump on keys? This Christmas, I don't know where you're at, is an opportunity for you to respond to that invitation that Jesus gives you. To respond to the invitation to be in Jesus' presence this Christmas, but also to be in Jesus' presence indefinitely. We all need this. We all need this. I want us to pray a prayer together that as a community, but also as individuals, we will commit to respond to Jesus' invitation to be in his presence this Christmas. That I'm Jesus, I'm going to determine, I'm going to commit to find you in all the noise, in all the fear, mongering that happens in the media I will choose faith in you I will find you I will pursue you I will commit to finding you this Christmas even if it's I have to cost me everything Jesus I will commit to find you in every moment in every component that we may put Jesus as the central part of our lives, that Jesus would be on the throne in heaven. We know he is as much as he is in our own lives here on earth, that his kingdom will come and his will be done here, here, as it is there. Let's all pray together. And you can make this prayer your prayer by just saying amen at the end. Maybe you don't think my prayer is good enough and they're my words and you want to pray your own prayer once I've finished. That's cool, but just... Let's invite Jesus in. Jesus, thank you for the invitation you gave ordinary people 2,000 years ago to come to your birthday party. To be in your presence. To have their lives transformed and changed by you. Thank you that you offer us the same opportunity today. You offer us the same opportunity this Christmas. May we not lose you in the noise of Christmas. May we not lose you in the the food, in the family. But may we find you there. We commit to finding you there, Jesus. For those that need to see something better than what they're currently seeing, Jesus, will you help them see you? For those who need repurposing, for those who need to know that they are significant, will you remind them of that? For those who need to commit further to the pursuit of finding you, whatever that looks like, will you help them to do that? And Jesus, finally, for those who need to choose faith over fear, this Christmas more than any other, will you help them to do that, Jesus? We pray in the wonderful, wonderful, majestic name of King 
Jesus. Amen. Thanks, Mitch. Sing in exaltation, sing all you 
Richard and the Christmas tree. Oh, it, you know, but imagine? what a great final song, yeah. you know, in all that goes on of Christmas. If you can hold your focus, yeah. you know, and actually it's God who deserves our attention yeah. and Amen. our worship, you know, because nothing on this earth compares to how good he is. Yeah, you know. so good. Well, guys, we hope you've had fun this morning. Yeah. We've had so much fun. We've had a good laugh. We do. And we want to say one more thing before we go. We want to say Merry Happy Christmas! Christmas! <laughs> Mine didn't even blow up. Ooh, That's fantastic. all we've got, guys. <laughs> Have a great Christmas. Happy Christmas. We'll see, see you on later. Christmas Day here at 10.30. Bye. Bye.